Yeah, we can start with the one that appears to have the greater mass appeal, which would be calories or, or what I would like to refer to as just energy or sufficient energy. So you must have sufficient energy in the body coming into the body in order to provide the, the, the fuel for the growth of the fat cell. However, what is too often overlooked is the absolute requirement of elevated insulin. Um, a fat cell does not inherently know what to do with the energy that it has surrounding it. And we are regularly growing fat cells on little petri dishes. And it is so uh, stark to look at the difference in the way the fat cells behave in the absence or later the presence of insulin. So as we are growing the fat cells out across this little plate, they are surrounded with energy, calories. There's fat and there's glucose, which are the two building blocks for triglycerides within the fat cell itself, the triglycerides, which are kind of giving the fat cell its big fat blob, or what we call a lipid droplet. And, and so again, the fat cells are surrounded by calories, a, an abundance of energy, and yet they're small. There's no changes on those fat cells until we start sprinkling in insulin into the culture, into the, 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 the bath, the, the medium, we call it, the liquid that the cells are bathing in. Once we start putting in insulin, now the fat cells know what to do, which is store the energy. So that's a part that's so often overlooked. And this doesn't apply to all metabolism in all cells, but it is a pretty central theme that cells need to be told what to do with the energy they have available, whether it's energy available on the outside to come in or whether it's energy that the cell already has available within itself it's the hormones, it's hormones like insulin or glucagon or epinephrine, adrenaline, that and others, growth hormone, that signal to the cell what to do with the energy that it has access to. The cell doesn't just know what to do with the energy. The hormones are what's sort of sampling the entire body, understanding what's going on in the entire body, and then dictating individual cells. You know, it's like the hormones are the conductor to the, of, of the core of the orchestra. And when it comes to fat cell growth, you have on one side, the hormone insulin, which is, is overwhelmingly promoting the growth of the fat cell. And it is so powerful in its own right that it is offset by multiple other hormones that tend to have a, a catabolic effect to insulin's anabolic effect. Like some of the other ones I mentioned, Glucagon and epinephrine, um, most, uh, most obviously, and even, and growth hormone. So there are a handful of hormones that are trying to get the fat cell to shrink and share its energy, all to try to offset the incredible power of insulin, which is telling the fat cell to store energy. But it's even, insulin goes even further than that. As much as insulin has a very pronounced central effect on, uh, or, or directed effect, on um, fat cells to stimulate their growth. Insulin also has effects at the, at the brain, um, stimulating to a degree, some degree of appetite or satiety um, in various instances. Not, not to mention the effect that insulin has on leptin levels from the fat cells. Again, a direct effect at the fat cell. Um, but insulin will also elicit a whole body effect to slow metabolic rate. We have known that for decades. Um, indeed, over a hundred years ago, um, two famous Harvard scientists, Elliot P. Joslin and Francis G. Benedict, came together to try to understand the metabolism in what they called severe diabetes, which we would just say kind of uncontrolled type 1 diabetes, that they noted in these individuals who have no insulin, their metabolic rate was 20 to 30 percent higher than it should be. There was something uncontrolled, this fire just raging through their body 